In 2000, I was looking for five naira to eat. Five naira. And God still would not allow me to ask anybody. He said, I am your great and exceeding reward. He would not allow me to even ask my brother for any amount of money. Nobody. I would look up to him. Ladies and gentlemen, I had nothing. No chair, no table. The first two staff that I had, one of them sat on the only furniture that we had in that room, which was a cane dust bin by the side of the door. The other person sat with me on the executive mattress on the floor. I did not have a bed, I had a mattress, there's a difference. The mattress was covering a hole in my carpet. You need nothing to create a bridge. So if you have nothing, congratulations, you already have your share capital. Thank you, sir. Once you know what you have, you're already a power. Let me move on. And let me tell you, the most important thing is, what is the world seeing about what we are doing here? When the world looks at Africa, they see the same kind of things that we are seeing. Everywhere that you look, we're hearing the same thing. What is it? Okay, what is it? Africa rising. Yet we are bothering ourselves about what is working, what is not working. They are looking at us and the eyes of the world see potential. They are seeing potential. In 2008, a gentleman by the name of B.J. Mahajan wrote a book called Africa Rising. That book changed the narrative of Africa and the way the world looks at Africa. There is no CEO of a global company that has not read this book. There is no president of a world power that has not read this book. This guy literally, by this book, created a new Bible on Africa. And he talked about how the world needs to tap into the, the purchasing power of over 900 million people. But you see, B.J. Mahajan only looked at Africa from a consuming point of view. He didn't yet realize what we can do when we become producers. He wasn't banking on a change in Africa. He was banking on opportunities from what we think that we don't understand. And yet the world looks at us and says, how can a people like this have so much poverty in the midst of plenty? Nobody can understand it. How can a people so blessed yet live in abject poverty? It is not understandable. Until you understand the meaning of poor, somebody say poor. poor. Passing over opportunities repeatedly. <laughs> Every day they see the same things that we see. Things that should inspire us to produce a new product. To create. People will see human beings at a bus stop and it has not yet occurred to you to buy a race. Passing over opportunities repeatedly. Somebody say with the Africa rising. Africa rising. Listen to this. I want you to watch this very carefully. Are you seeing? Can you see it? What do you see? What do you see? I'm sorry? Look at this. Are you right? Yes, it goes. Can you see it? Yes. It's a pistol? Thank you very much. Where is the trigger for this pistol? Nigeria. Where in Nigeria? What are called? Nothing is going to happen for Africa until Nigeria is triggered. Nothing can happen in Nigeria until, right? Leave us it. This is where the heart and the trigger is. My question is, who are the people in Leave us it? Where are they? Oh, are you the ones? Yeah. So you are in the right place at the right time. Yeah. I thought that by now somebody should have been there. Your potential, and they're going to invest in it. So I'm going to give you in less than ten minutes three key things that you're going to do because the world is coming for your goods. Hear me? There have been 
two dimensions of colonization. The third one is the one we are entering into now. The first one was what you called geographic colonization, where I showed you 19, in, in 1885, people came together and started to seize land in Trent. That was geographic colonization. But soon after the Obafemi Awolowos and all of that began to say, look, we must get independence, they had to change strategy. And they went into something else called commercial colonization. Commercial colonization was where they will buy things from you, raw material, at low value, and sell you finished products at high value. So they will buy groundnuts from you and sell you groundnut oil. They will buy cocoa from you and sell you chocolates. They will buy furniture, wood, hides and skins and sell you furniture. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, that was the time when they started to realize that there was trade imbalance. And so the world started to create this revolution where they started setting up World Trade Organization and saying it is not fair. We need to have trade balance. We need to have trade balance. So the world, listen, the world has shifted gear now. Now they are going into not geographic colonization, not commercial colonization. They are going into what you call economic colonization. Let me tell you the difference between commercial and economic colonization. Are you ready to hear it? With commercial colonization, they will buy your wood and sell you furniture. With economic colonization, they will buy your forest. So they will buy what produces your wood. Then they will put our children into the forest to go and cut them. And we will say, praise the Lord. Our children are now working for a multinational. And they will have the capacity to take your hundred percent of their earnings out. Because before they brought it in as foreign direct investment, that had to be signed off. Mm. So in 1976, Obasanjo just said there was going to be a policy of nationalization. By 2002 or 3, Obasanjo had to reverse that policy came in and said anything, we need the money. So let me tell you what they have brought so far. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Yes, sir. In 2003, the world invested 2.23 billion in Nigeria as foreign direct investment. That thing went up in 2004 to 5.31 billion. In 2005, it jumped to 9.92 billion. By 2006, it was 9.44 billion. By 2007, it dropped to 2 to 5.1 billion. Can anybody tell why? 2007, thank you. 2007, there was a change of government. Therefore, people held back a bit. They didn't start any new transactions. They wanted to see what kind of new government was going to be there. Do you understand what I'm saying? By 2008, the trust factor went up. It went to $7.1 billion. By 2009, $7.29 billion was put into Nigeria. By 2010, something happened. It dropped to 5.13. Does anybody know what happened? Changing law, changing leadership. By 2011, it went up 8.025 billion. 2012, 6.8 billion. 2013, 5.5 billion. Anybody know why it's dropping again? Because they go around and many of those other things. But just to let you know that in the last 10 years, 71.58 billion dollars has been invested in Nigeria. On Officially, 